What's going on guys? Hope you're doing awesome and welcome back for another PyTorch video. So in this video, I want to show you an example of how to use the inbuilt data sets from Torch Text. So as we can see on the screen, uh, we have data sets in a few different categories from, you know, sentiment analysis to question classification and uh, yeah, ma machine translation, etc. So it's really a great tool to get started in these different areas of NLP. Um, so I'm not going to go through how to load all of these different data sets. Uh, it's quite similar from just seeing one example. So the one we're going to go through is the multi, multi 30 K data set, which is under machine translation, where we want to translate from English to German. So as usual, we have to do our imports. And uh, so we're going to import spacey. We're going to from torch text.datasets import multi 30k, which is the data set we're going to use. And then from torch text.data import field and bucket iterator. Okay, so what we want to do next is um, I'm going to copy this in real quick. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do spacey underscore, uh, underscore English. Uh, spacey.load en and uh, as I copied in here to download it you would do this python m spacey download n and you would have it of course you would have to have spacey first so pip install spacey and then we want similarly for for the German one so and it's under de and then we want to have our token so we're going to do define tokenize and this is going to be, some, I guess, some repetition from the last video. So we're just going to do return toke.txt for toke in spacey English dot tokenizer of text. And we're going to copy this because we're going to use sort of the same, but for the German one. And then we're going to use spacey underscore German uh, or G E R instead. Okay, so that's the tokenizer. Then we're going to do English is equal to field uh, sequential equals true. Use vocabulary equals true. Tokenize equals tokenize English. And then lower equals true. And then we're going to do pretty much the same thing, but we're going to copy this and we're going to do it for German instead. And uh, we're going to use the same pre-processing, but we're going to use the other token. So let's see what we want to do now is we want to use the the multi 30 K data set. So we're going to do train data, uh, validation data and test data. And we're going to get all of those from the multi 30 K dot split. And then we're going to do uh, EXTS. And then we're going to do a, a tuple and then dot de and then dot en. So extensions here tell us the, um, the, the source language and the target language. So the first one will be German and then so that would be the source language and we want to translate that into English. And so when we write the fields, we need to match that. So this would be German. Uh, comma English. Then what we want to do is we want to build our vocabulary. So we're going to do English dot build vocabulary uh, train data and then let's do I don't know max size equals I don't know ten thousand and minimum frequency I don't know let's two and then Let's copy this and we're just going to do German build vocabulary. All right, last thing to do is uh, get our iterators. So we're going to do train iterator, comma validation iterator, uh, and then test iterator, bucket iterator dot splits. And then we're going to do train data, comma validation data, comma test data and uh, 
I believe I didn't mention this in the last video when we did when we use bucket iterator, but it's very important that you match. So the first one in this tuple is going to the train iterator. Um, the validation data, which is the second, is going to the validation iterator, etc. So that you you match those. And then we're gonna define our batch size to be I don't know 64, and then device is equal to CUDA. So then we're going to do for batch in train iterator, we're going to do print batch um, and uh, yeah, we can just do that and let's see how it looks like. So here we see, let's see, let's make this a little bit larger. So here we see the, the different batches. Uh, all of them have, yeah, so we have dot source if we want to have this specific, um, the, um, the German numericalized sentences I guess and then same for the English ones uh, we would just we would just do batch dot source or batch dot target uh, but here we get the overview of the batch so we have 24 times 64 which is the number of examples and we see here that it's 23 so that the translation is sort of of equal length which makes sense right um, but as we see here, it's not always of the same length. Sometimes the translation can be longer. And of course, all of them are padded as well. Maybe one of these translations is only 10 in length, but the longest one was 28. So everything else has to be pad padded to be exactly 28 of length. So then what we, what I want, would like to show is uh, sort of a, a, let's see, we can do that in the, in this one, we can do sort of English uh, dot vocabulary dot string to index. So string to to index. So uh, we can do we can send in a, a word and we can get the index from the vocabulary. So let's say we do the that will be the fifth index. If we do something like I, then we get uh, yeah 954. And we can also map, map back and we can do English dot vocabulary and we can do index to string. And that would be, let's say we do five, we get back the. So you can sort of use this if you would like to map back, map, map back and you could sort of, you could send it into a sequence to sequence network and you would get some output and you would like to know well what is this actually saying you can go through each of them map them back to the word and then you would have the translated sentence uh, so just a a minor detail that might be interesting to know so in the next video i'm going to show you sort of a true example of how you would do this in a more real project so so more specifically let's say you have two large text files how would you actually go from just having those text files to uh, actually having a, a training and validation and test set uh, and in a format where you can send it to Torch Text. So uh, check that out if you're interested in seeing a more, I guess, real example of this. And uh, with that said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section and hope to see you in the next one.